ready for Peppa. Are we ready for Peppa to come out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my husband, Pastor Tom, is going to share the word with us today. Have a seat. That was a little quicker than I thought. I got it around my gum here. Uh, be chewing it like a wild man. I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with um, godly things. You know, we have an um, enemy that wants to distract us and keep us from using our faith and um, I just want you to be encouraged today um, that we have a we've been redeemed we've been set apart we've been sanctified we have access to all the wisdom we need at any time we need it and with God all things are possible Right? I, uh, this spring was a um, different kind of spring. We were, there were, um, if you remember, it was pretty cool. And we had the choice to, to plant or not to plant. And I chose not to plant because the temperatures were very cold. And uh, I wasn't the only one that chose not to plant, but... We're going to focus on me here a little bit, okay? <clears throat> and uh, there were some, a few around that chose to plant in our area. And in our area, that was, if you look at it today, that was the perfect thing to do. To plant early, which I chose not to, okay? So, I can either choose to believe that God is still going to bless me and still prosper me, or I can choose to believe that, God, I screwed it up. I made a mistake. I should have planted early, right? Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's me. That's how I work. I, I drive by these other fields, and they're this tall, almost, almost a tassel, and mine is this tall. Now, mine doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look like the other, <laughs> all right? So, I can choose to believe when I drive by my fields to thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you for prospering me. Maybe I messed it up. Maybe I don't know. Because you don't really know till harvest time whether it was the right thing to do. You, I mean, you can think you know, but you really don't know. Because the weather will dictate, the July and August weather will dictate pretty much what happens. And, uh, but we still have to fight to use our faith when it looks like we've messed it up. And it really doesn't make any difference whether you chose to play. I'm not, that, that's not a big deal as far as life goes. But other choices that we make in life, we can choose to be defeated by the choices that we made that were wrong, or we can choose to believe that in the God that still delivers no matter whatever the situation. Amen. I mean, really, we can make some really, 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 really bad mistakes, and the Lord can still deliver us if we will still use our mouth and fight the good fight of faith. But we have to use our mouth and fight the good fight of faith and choose our words wisely. Death and life really are in the power of the tongue. We all know those verses, but we don't really believe them, I don't think. I, I really don't think we really believe them. If they were in our heart, if they were in our heart, it would more affect the way that we talk. Um... Remember the uh, Jericho people that they were, the Lord told them to go, and, and I might not have this story exactly right. I didn't look it up. But he told them to go around Jericho, and they were supposed to what? 
not talk. They were supposed to not talk. They were supposed to not talk. Not, what do you suppose they were supposed to not talk? I, I suspect that there are people, a lot of those people are like me, that would be looking at the enemy and they might let a word slip out of their mouth that might not have been the right word. There are times in our lives we'd be better off just zipping it. Really. When we don't know what to say, then say nothing. Uh, I mean, you can call on Jesus. You can do those kind of things. But don't let words that will affect the situation in a negative way come out of your mouth. Um, You know... I was asking the Lord about faith, and he says, well, what are you saying? You know, the scripture says, we believe, therefore we speak. So if you don't know where, really where your faith is, check your words out. And then you might want to start changing the words that you speak. I know for me, I, I don't want this to be, you all are looking at me like a, like. It's nasty out there. Hey, God has given us an opportunity to be victorious in every situation, every second of our life. And we choose with our words whether to accept that or to reject it. That's just what we do. I, uh, I kind of want to talk about faith today, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. Um, See, and I feel like I know less and less about it every time I get up here. Um, you know, it says in the scripture that and Paul said that the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And we know that we're supposed to use his faith as scripture. But Jesus talked to those people, and he said, where is your faith? He asked them where their faith was. Where is your faith? So obviously, there is some kind of difference between my faith and his faith. But there's some kind of something that ties it together. Our faith and his faith. I think one of the things that ties it together is our, is our mouth. Now, we still have to Pay attention to our thoughts. No, there's no question about that. Second Corinthians 10, I think. Go to Second Corinthians 10, 3, I think. Hopefully that's the right one. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And it's especially important that we remember these things when, when we see the battle in the country. When we, not just in the country, but... In, in our life, we understand that the enemy is, is, is after us. And our things, he, he comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And I, that's all I want. I don't want to say any more about him. I want to glorify the name of Jesus because Jesus is where our victory rests. For we, though we, but we have to not be ignorant that we're in a battle. He, he is, he's fighting for the words that are coming out of your mouth. If death and life really are in the power of the tongue... For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Why? To the what? Pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting. This is how we do that. Pull down strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Everything that the enemy says is a lie, right? He's a liar, right? Everything that he says is a lie. Okay? Yeah. He may use facts to support his lie, but facts aren't necessarily the truth. Yes. For instance, if you're not feeling so good, and he tells you, well, you're feeling kind of crappy, and, you know, just, is that the truth? The truth is, by his stripes I've been made whole. The truth is... Uh, forgive, forget not all his benefits. He forgives all of our iniquities. He heals what? All of our diseases. All of them. All, all of 
love them. That's the truth. The fact might be that my body is struggling. That might be a fact. You don't have to deny that fact. But the truth is you've been healed. We've got to get so that the truth that we trust in and rest on resonates more in our heart. Somehow or another, we've got to get it in our heart. What does it say uh, in Romans 8, I think it's 17, or maybe it's 11, I don't know exactly, but where, where faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. the word of, well, the word of Christ is actually more accurate. It's the word of God is in King James, but the word of Christ is actually more accurate. It's, it and Jesus says in, in John that ye are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. Now, are you getting an idea how important the spoken word is? Jesus said, you're clean through the word that I have spoken to you. Now, he was the word in the flesh right in front of him. But generally, his walking by didn't heal him, but his words did. So I'm, here I am in my life, I'm trying to figure out how to use faith. What part, of, what part of me, what part do I play in this faith situation? Jesus is the what? The author and finisher of faith, according to Hebrews, right? Yeah. He's the author and the finisher. So he's kind, of the, he's kind of the big deal when it comes to faith. Well, I had my wife look this up for me, and it's pretty interesting. Is all this from the Strong's Concordance? Yes, and then some other commentaries. Okay, yes and no. <laughs> uh, the word for faith is pistis, which most of us know, uh, and it means to be persuaded. Uh, properly persuasion, or be persuaded, come to trust. If we get persuaded enough, then we will trust. If we get persuaded enough, then we will trust. Now, get this. Faith is always a gift from God. Never something that can be produced by people. You ever try to conjure up your faith? You try to build, uh, try to get your faith stronger? Well, well I have. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to tell you I haven't tried to do that. And yet, I'm getting an understanding here that that whatever that little spark of faith is originated from the Father, originated from Him. It's him trying to get me to walk in victory, to use the faith that he's given. It says in Romans, he's given every man faith. Well, I think we say same measure. I don't know if that, can we get that verse up there? It's Romans 12, 2, 3, 3, 4, I don't know, somewhere around there. We'll find, Casey will find it for me. Or Brendan, I don't know whoever does that back there. But I appreciate both of you. Be not conformed to this world. Okay, next verse. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Whatever measure of faith you need to carry out his will in your life, he's given it to you. Now, we are, I would used to quote it just like you did, same measure. It doesn't say same measure. We all don't have the same job, people. We don't have the same job. Quit acting like we all have the same. We don't have the same job. We all don't need the same faith. We all need his faith that he's given us. I'm just going to read some of this stuff because it's pretty good. Faith is always a gift from God, never something that can, be produced by pe- that can be produced by people. In short, pistis, faith for the believer is God's divine persuasion. Oh, my. Somehow or another, we've got, we got to operating faith by our mind, by whatever we could figure out, by whatever we thought by whatever 
moved us. But it's, if we would get to the point where we would allow him to move us, our faith would then start to move the mountains, it talks about. Because it's by his persuasion that we carry it out, not by ours. We don't try to move the mountain on our behalf. We try to move the mountain because he asks us to. For the believer, faith for the believer is God's divine persuasion and therefore distinct from human belief or confidence, yet involving it. We have to be persuaded that his truth is true in order for us to really grab a hold of the faith that he's given. You start to see the difference between ours and his. We grab a hold of what he's given to us. To bring it to pass. We don't try to make it happen on our own. The Lord continuously bursts faith in the yielded believer. Did you get that? The Lord continuously bursts faith in the yielded believer so they can know what he prefers. In other words... If we go to the Scripture and we see something in the Scripture that is for us, that he's, uh, there's a promise there, and we know all the promises in Christ are yes and amen, right? right? All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ, all of them. We see from the Scripture that should be, cause a birthing in us, that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of Christ causes a birthing in us. I'm trying to get this in my life so I can paint a picture. I don't know. I, it seems like I can. How? I don't know the right terms, actually, even. I can seem to grab a hold of faith better if I can see a picture. Okay? And I'm trying to get a, this picture of his words coming in here and birthing in me the faith that's needed to bring it to pass. No matter whether it's faith for my healing or faith for your healing. When we pray for somebody, it's not, it's, not, it, it's him birthing. It. I, know from the, I, I know from the scripture, it says, lay, on, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That should birth faith in me that I'm wanting to lay hands on the sick and expect, without a doubt, recovery. That's what the Scripture says. Pistis in secular antiquity <clears throat> referred to a guarantee. In other words, secular language, it referred to a guarantee or a warranty. In Scripture, faith is God's warranty, certifying that the revelation he inbirthed will come to pass his way. The revelation that he inbirthed, whether the Holy Spirit speaks to you or whether you see it in Scripture, is revelation that he is trying to birth in you to bring to pass his will, his way. See, I want to get to the point where I allow him to do his work. I just need to do mine, and mine's pretty simple. Mine is to trust his word. That's, that's, they asked Jesus, how do you do the works of God? And what did he say? Do you remember that scripture? I think it's in John something, and I can't quote the verse exactly. But he said, believe on him whom he has sent. That's, this, he said, that's how you do the works. You want to do the works of God? You believe on him whom he has sent. Can you find that one for me? Uh, John 6 something. I'm going to use you guys up. How do you do the works of God? You believe on him whom he has sent. Okay. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe on him, on him whom he hath sent. I think if we get our job definition down a little bit better and allow him to do what he says he'll do, if we'll just do 
what we need to do. Sometimes we have a tough time figuring out what we need. We want to do it all. We want to do the whole work, the beginning, the end, and the... We, we want to be the author and finisher of faith. In our actions, I don't think any of us really want to do that. Faith is also used collectively of all the times God has revealed his will, which includes the full revelation of Scripture. Indeed, God the Lord guarantees that all of this revelation will come to pass. The root of pistis, or is patho, which supplies the core meaning of faith, it is God's warranty that guarantees the fulfillment of the revelation he births within the receptive believer. And it's got scripture for it. This is pretty, actually, I, maybe I should have had some of these printed up. But it's just given me a different, I had asked her, I said, what can I say about faith that hadn't been said 40,000 times up here from the podium? Well, she says, well, maybe you need to say the same thing over and over, which is true. That's true. But sometimes I, I, just to feel good on my part, I'd like to be able to feel like I brought something to the game. <laughs> All right, you know, that might not be necessary, but I, you know, I'm just telling you, sometimes you'd like to feel that way. It's given me a different way of thinking about faith. Hopefully for me, I'm able to divide it up better for myself so that I can operate in it more. Faith is always received from God, never generated by us. Wow. That's a huge statement. Yes, it is. If faith is a gift, which we know it is, right? It's also a fruit. All of just a man, yes, all of those things. It's, it's, it's not generated by us. We receive the scripture. We know that that's true. And then we use this mouth to speak it Bring it out into the kingdom to get in agreement with the promise that he's spoken. Now, this is, a, this is another quote of Romans 12, 3. I'm just going to read it anyway. For through the grace given to me, I say that to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. To each a measure of faith. This, these, I always get these backwards. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Grace, which is his favor, right? Now, is everyone saved? No. no. Why? We know it's his will. Right? And they're not saved because they haven't received it. Basically, it comes right down to that. They just haven't received his gift. They haven't received his favor. They said, no, thank you. I'd rather do it on my own. You know, I want to work this out on my own. No, thanks, God. I got this, God. I'm going to be my own savior, my own provision, my own whatever. I've got this figured out. You've been, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. And it reminds me of Romans 10. What does Romans 10 say? How do you get born again? You do what? You believe in your heart, and then you do what? Confess with your mouth. You confess with your mouth. You confess with your mouth salvation. And salvation isn't just getting born again. Salvation is a whole wholeness package. And to get the whole wholeness package, we have to confess the whole wholeness package with our mouth. The whole package with our mouth. We're pretty good at the, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead. And because we've been taught that from Way back when, pretty much, well, I'm not going to say every church because I don't know, but a lot of churches, most churches, 
Preach that. That gets into a heart, and we believe it. Well, that's just automatic. We just believe that. Thank God he's made salvation pretty Easy. simple. And then we grow up, and then we see all the crap, and then all at once we're talked out of the rest of our salvation because of what we see. And then we get in agreement with it with our mouth. The disease that I have is my disease, uh, or my this and my that. <clears throat> You might be struggling with something, but sure don't claim it. Don't make it yours. The enemy is, you know, he wants to do battle with you. We recognize that. But we know that our Savior is the victor, right? Yes. In any situation. What is that one verse that says, uh, whose report do you believe? Whose, whose report are you going to believe? Then the, the rest of the verse is, I will believe the report of the Lord. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. <clears throat> Faith is only given to the redeemed. Are you the redeemed? Yes. It says in Psalms that let the redeemed of the Lord say, so. say it so, say it so, say it so, say it so. See, part of this, you know, if we don't get in agreement with those kind of, that, that we are redeemed, we're not going to birth, he's not, he can't birth faith in us. He, he, he wants to. Why do you think it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so? So he can begin to birth faith in you. It is not a virtue that can be worked up by human effort. Boy, is that so true. I have tried all my life. I have tried all my life to work up enough faith. I need to allow the faith that he's birthed in me come out. Not by my effort. It cannot be by my effort. If it was by my effort, Jesus would never have had to get on the cross. He would have never had to send him if I could do this on my own. Faith enables the believer to know God's preferred will. Accordingly, faith and God's preferred will are directly connected in Scripture. In sum... Faith is a persuasion from God we receive as he grants impulse, the divine spark. Faith is always the work of God and involves hearing his voice, whereby the believer lays hold of his preferred will. Now, don't get yourself all messed up saying, I don't hear his voice. You can read scripture, okay? If, 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 don't get all hung up on whether or not you've heard the audible voice. Not very many people have heard the audible voice. He can speak to us if he chooses that way. Most of the time he doesn't. He's chosen to speak to us through Scripture. What does it say in Romans there? How shall they believe except somebody preach it to you? The word has to be voiced somehow to get in here. So it can come out this. And then you're going to have whatsoever you say. It's what the scripture says. You'll have whatsoever you say. If you're speaking out of inburst faith, you're going to have whatsoever you say. See, it takes the load off of you. Right? 
I mean, you know, you know what the Scripture says. We know what it says. Sometimes we don't believe it. I just wrote an article for the Encourager, and I, the Lord was working with me on this verse in Romans, and it says in Romans, uh, therefore being made free from sin. It says it twice in Romans 6. And he says, do you believe that? And I said, well, I'd like to because I know that's what it says. <laughs> really? But I don't know if that's what's in my heart. Somehow or another, that Romans, I think, it's, I don't know what the verses are, but anyway, it's used twice in Romans 6. They have to become real in me. And they're only going to become real in me if I just keep putting them in here. Jesus said the words that I speak are what? Spirit and they are life. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. How do we get transformed into his image? What's, what's 2 Corinthians 3.18? Please. 2 Corinthians 3.18. I know I haven't been overworking you guys back there, so... <laughs> But we all, with open face, beholding as in glass the glory of the Lord, were changed into the same image from glory to glory. How? By the, By the Spirit. By the Spirit. It's the Spirit that does the work. If the words that he speaks are spirit and they are life, we have to believe that those words will do the work. We're just, but we are responsible to speak them. That's why when I've begun this, do, do, don't be so discouraged that you don't use your faith. The enemy's won then. Like I said, when I go buy my crops, I can say, I, I'm sorry, Lord, I messed it up. Maybe you can bless me next year. Maybe, I, maybe next year I'll listen and do it right. But this year I've done mess it up. I can say that. Or I can say, Lord, I thank you that you're the God of the impossible. And I thank you that your word says that we praise you. And uh, what's it say? The Lord will give the increase. God, even our own God, will bless us. And all the earth, ends of the earth, this, I think it's Psalm 111. But that the blessing is mine because I'm his son. Not because I deserve it. Not because I did it right. Think about the prodigal son. He messed it up. He just went out and just gave everything away. He listened to the, and he just spoiled all of his father's hard work. Really? All of his inheritance. And how did he get back into the father's good graces? He turned and went home. He turned and went home. He didn't even have time to say, I'm sorry. He turned and went home. Is the God, the Father that you worship, that good? Yes. Is he that good? Yes. That no matter whatever mistake I've made in the past, that when I turn, he's going to make it good? You know, I think about kids born out of wedlock, and I've watched... Can we talk about this? I guess we can. It's kind of... Sure. Okay. Can we talk? Some might not want to talk about it, but, you know. And I've seen testimony. And I've heard the ones that said, I was rejected, and I was this, and I was that, and I was that. And their life pretty much is a picture of that. And I've heard the ones that said, you know, God has really blessed me. He's encouraged me. He's told me I was his kid, and I came out victorious through the mess. We can be one or the other. We can be whichever one we choose to be. The one that's victorious in the mess, thank God, because we're in a mess all the freaking time. <laughs> Whether it's our choosing or the world's, we are in a mess all the time. And yet, he wants to deliver us through it. He wants to show us victory through it. 
Don't be discouraged. Use your faith. Fight for the victory that he's promised. Go to the scripture and find a verse. If it's only one verse. Sometimes I think, Lord God, if, you, if, you, if I only had one verse, that'd be good enough for me. That one right there. That one is awesome. Find that verse that lives in your heart that day. That birth, that birthed faith in you to bring the promise to pass. Find that verse. Because it's in there. Because nothing is impossible with him. Well, Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. Your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your scriptures. And you said without faith it's impossible to please you. But it says we just come to you, all that believe, right? I might as well quote it. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know, it's kind of unbelievable that we don't believe that you're a rewarder. I don't know. There's just something in us that comes against your ways. It's the carnal mind. Lord, I rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. That there is no blockage. That we receive word from your spirit. That it bursts in us faith. To bring to pass the impossible at our command. In any situation. To bring healing. To bring deliverance. To bring joy. To bring hope. To those that need. And we thank you, Lord, that you have birthed that hope in us. That hope in Jesus. All our hope is in Jesus. So we thank you. We praise you. You're awesome. Thanks for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, what I had printed out for Tom was I found on Bible Hub, and I had just searched that um, one scripture. Well, you could just search Pistis, you know, in there, and then it was under helps, and then, like, what does it say at the top of that? Underneath the help? Okay. Yeah, helps. Um, word studies. And then it had all of that information on there. So I had to print all of that off because <laughs> he doesn't do computers, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, so I hope you had a, an awakening today on faith. And I'm, I know it helped him and it helped me to see, you know, a, a different perspective of it because yeah. it's way bigger than we know. It's way bigger than we know. But when we get a little bit